The Gospel according to John, chapter 1. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. They came and they saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day. And it was about four o'clock in the afternoon. And one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And he went and found his brother and said to him, we found the Messiah, which is translated the anointed one. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John, but now you are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip went and found Nathanael and said to him, We found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And Nathanael said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. And Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you must be the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to all of them, Very truly I tell you, you will see the heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Amen. You may be seated. The gospel question I want you to think about this morning is, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? It was February, I think, the beginning of February, and it was cold. You know, I had this idea to start a new church, but one thing I needed was some money. So I started putting in all these grant applications. And, and, and I got this, this application back, and, I, and I was, as I was looking at it, uh, I thought, Man, I want to do something other than just write a bunch of long answers. Because why I want to do this really doesn't have much to do with a, a lot of long answers. It has more to do with, uh, with an experience. So I was looking at the application, and I was thinking about it, and I said, well, I'm just going to shove that aside. Uh, let's go do an experiment. So I called up a friend who had a video camera, and we just, we just walked around. Now, we went up to, to Wash U and Forest Park there, and we just went up and down the loop with a video camera in hand, and I just would walk up to just strangers, you know. And if they didn't completely walk the other direction as soon as I approached them, I would ask them, do you, do you just mind if I ask you a question on, on tape? <laughs> It, it's a real interesting experiment if y'all ever want to do this. You just walk around and... <laughs> even if you never ask the question. And, and they, if the, the few who said, yeah, yeah, you can ask us a question. So I'd say, okay, tur- turn on the camera. We got one. Uh, and I'd stand there like I knew what I was doing. And I'd say, you know, I'm just interested in to know, you know, do you ever go to church? Some of them say yes. Most of them no. And they didn't know where this was going. I said, you know... When you go to church, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? Well, let me tell you how good of an idea that was. I got nothing that I could use. I got a lot of interesting stuff, but nothing that I could show to a bunch of other pastors. I mean, they said all sorts of things. But you know, in preparation for this sermon, I asked a few people, just different folks, different ages, different places, some who like church, some who don't. When you... You know, when you come to church, what are you looking for? And here's some of the responses I got. 
Someone said, I want a community in which I can ask and explore tough questions about God and spirituality in our world. That's a good answer. Another person answered, I'm looking for something that's authentic. Authentic worship that leads to authentic discipleship in the world. I took that to mean they just want a community that seems genuine. Where the words and the actions match. Another person said, I'm looking for uplifting fellowship. So something that, that lifts me. I'm looking for friendship that makes God smile. I thought that was pretty. Another person said, I'm looking for a place to worship. Another person said, I'm looking for a place to find healing where I can learn, where I can love, where I can grow, where I can make a difference in the community. Another person said, you know, I'm just looking for a place to belong. What are you looking for? You know, it's one of those powerful questions. Because I think it's, it's one of those few questions that all of us, wherever we are in life, have to struggle with. You know, what are we looking for out of our life? What are we looking for out of our relationships? What are we looking for out of our work? What are we looking for? Maybe that's why, you know, visioning has become such a popular thing within companies. Anyone had to do that in the past year or two? You know, visioning? No, it's just a question about, you know, what do you want? What are you looking for? Because as the theory goes, if you don't know what you want, then you'll probably never find it. It's a core human question. What are you looking for? And maybe that's why it's the very first thing Jesus ever said in the gospel. First thing Jesus ever said, in fact, if you have one of those Bibles with the neat little red words for Jesus, you can flip to the Gospel of John and you can just find the very first red words. And you know what you'll find? You'll find that question. What are you looking for? What's that? Five words? Yeah. Four, five. five. First five. What are you looking for? The story goes like this. Jesus is walking. He hasn't done anything. I mean, he hasn't performed a miracle. He hasn't done a healing. He hasn't teached, you know, he hasn't taught anybody anything. He's just walking. And John the Baptist points at him and says, look, there's the Lamb of God who will take away the sin of the world. And these two guys standing there just said, well, let's go follow him. And they just start following. And as they're walking, Jesus, you know, just turns around and looks them right in the eye and says, what are you looking for? Before I get into this, though, I want to say something about the book of John. If anyone's ever read the Bible, you might, uh, you might know what I'm talking about here. There's two things about John. First, it's kind of an abstract, a lofty kind of book. Sometimes he's up in the clouds a little bit, John is. But there's one thing neat about his story. Every one of his stories has two purposes. You know, there's a literal meaning, and then there's this symbolic meaning. So it's like he's having a conversation with the characters of the story, but he wants everyone who reads the story to to see themselves in the story. So like the question, what are you looking for, was aimed at those disciples, but it's really meant for for us who are reading it. You know, he loves to do that. And, And a second thing. You see, John does not like to give easy answers. In fact, for John, following Jesus is a journey in which the disciples get to discover for themselves what it means to follow. No easy answers. You get to discover the meaning for yourself. And so this morning, we are at the beginning of a journey, both in the story of John and in the story of this faith community. Jesus was on a journey, and the very first thing he does is invite some other folks to come along with him. The first thing Jesus did was call together people who were interested in walking the journey with him. And so as he's walking, these first two guys decide to follow What are you looking for? Over the past year, I have to admit, I've I've thought about church a little more than a healthy person should. (laughs) And, And I'll have to confess something. It's not because I'm in love with the church. Really not. In fact, it's something quite different. You know... I've asked so many questions about church the past year, largely because I'm unsatisfied with church. 
You know, just this past week, I heard a radio interview, and I was listening, and they were interviewing a guy who had to play Jesus in a made-for-TV movie. And they said, you know, out of all the roles you ever thought you'd play, you know, did you ever think you'd play Jesus? I said, no, never. You know, and they said, well, what was it like? Tell us, what was it like to play Jesus in a movie? And the guy said something interesting. He said, you know, it was really hard, because I had always thought of Jesus as this stern, cold guy who just kind of told people what to do. And, and I could not get into that character. It was so different from my way of understanding the world that I couldn't get there, and I had a big breakthrough. And the interviewer said, well, what, you know, what was your breakthrough? And the guy said, you know, my breakthrough was when I learned, I went and talked to somebody, I learned that Jesus was not any of these things. None of those things that I'd been taught. It's not the way that I had to play the role. He said, it was at that point that I discovered that I could play a Jesus that was worth following. And that's what I tried to do. You know, in a funny way, when I heard that interview, it hit me. I mean, I'm a pastor in search of a church worth going to. I'm a pastor in search of a Jesus that's worth following. In the gospel story, it's the beginning of a journey for five different people. If you follow that storyline, five different people, ordinary people, fishermen, villagers, just ordinary folks who are looking for something more out of their lives. Each of these people come to Jesus looking for something different. Did you pick that up in the story? I mean, there's like 18 different titles that they use for Jesus. Rabbi, Son of God, Lamb of God, Messiah, Anointed One, Teacher. For the first two men, they they were looking for someone to stay with, to be with. They called him rabbi, teacher. They were looking for wisdom, something that would help them guide their lives. You know, when Simon came, it was a new identity he was looking for. Have you ever just wanted, I mean, you know, to say, I want to be someone different from who I am. And Jesus said, you are. From this point forward, you're going to have a new name. You know, for Philip, for Philip, he was looking for a prophet. The one about whom Moses wrote about. He wanted someone who would speak uh, the truth about the world in a way that inspired him to do something about it. He he wanted a prophet. And then there was Nathaniel. Oh, you got to love Nathaniel. I know I have some Nathaniels in here. Do you know what Nathaniel was? He was the skeptic. You know, nothing good can come from Nazareth. Believe me. I've been to Nazareth, there's nothing there. I've been to that church. I've been down the street to that other church. There is nothing there. Nothing good can come out of that building. I'm going to go look somewhere else. Nathaniel's perfect. And do you know what Jesus says about Nathaniel? This is the guy. This one is the one in whom there is no deceit. Get over here. You're perfect. You're perfect. You know why? I mean, you know, someone said it. Authenticity. I'll tell you, I don't believe this. I don't believe that anything good can come from Nazareth. Jesus looks at him and says, now now this guy's got it right. This is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Come over here. Come over here and follow. So all this begs the gospel question. What brought you here this morning? What are you looking for? Maybe you're like me, and you have a love for the church, but you're looking for a church worth being a part of. You're looking for a Jesus worth following. Maybe you don't care a lick about the church, and a friend or family member said, you've got to come to this first worship service at least. I don't care if you ever come after that, but you're going to be there September 17th, and you are do it just to appease you know, the person who invited you. Maybe you're just searching. You don't want to make any commitments. I'm not sure what I'm going to do or what I'm going to think. I just want to look around a little bit. Take it for a test drive. Maybe you're coming here with significant pain that happened as a result of a church or as a result of a relationship or as the result of work. And maybe you're looking for healing. Maybe you've been alienated from people who are supposed to have cared about you and you're looking for a place to belong. Maybe you're looking for a date or friends, or a a cause to give your life away for. Maybe you're looking for something for your kids. I 
I, the possibilities are endless. But what the gospel tells us is that there is something about following Jesus that will address our needs. It will meet us where we are. There's something about following Jesus that begins to reveal what we are looking for. Confession time. As your pastor, I'm looking for some things also. I'm looking for some things also. I'm looking for a church that's worth inviting people to. I'm looking for a community of friends that I can really share who I am with. I want a place that's not hypocritical, where the words you hear and the actions you see match. I want a place where I can be honest with you and you can be honest with me. I want a place where talented and passionate people feel like they can offer their gifts to something worth offering it to. I want a place that is truly welcoming and doesn't just say it is or put it on a banner. You know what I mean? I want to experience God in an authentic way, whatever that looks like. I want a place, don't, don't tell me, don't say, well, we've always done it that way. See, we've never done it anyway. <laughs> we've never done anything. I want a place where there's not those barriers. That's what I'm looking for. What about you? Friends, there's a lot of folks in this world that promise a lot of great things. And boy, churches are among them. Easy answers, wonderful lives, a simple God, a right or wrong Jesus. But that's not the Jesus of Scripture. This Jesus is not black and white. He's not easy. He's not simple. Jesus doesn't make promises to make our lives instantly better. It's funny how Jesus chose to answer those first disciples. This Jesus does something different. When they responded, Jesus, we want to know where you're staying. He didn't tell them their question was wrong. He didn't say, well, you know, what a stupid question to ask me. All the things you could be looking for. He didn't make judgments. He didn't give them answers. He said, come and see. Come and see. All he did was invite them on a journey. We're starting a new church. And I already promise you that if you're in the search for a perfect church, this probably isn't it. (laughs) You know people who are in search of a perfect church, don't you? It's not going to offer easy answers. A lot of people have asked me over the few months, what's the church going to be like? What kind of worship will you have? What kind of people are going to be there? And I've tried to resist giving them answers. All I've said is, you know what? Come and see. Because church is not something that's best described, but it's something that's best experienced. Jesus doesn't teach the disciples a bunch of information right off the bat. He doesn't begin by giving them lofty explanations of God or trying to criticize or critique what they do in the world. Churches that want to sum up religion in a leaflet or a book or a well-placed sermon, they don't get it either. You see, All Jesus did in the beginning was just invite people to come on the journey. Just come and see. He understood that what was most powerful about God is when God is experienced. It's that experience that changes us, that makes us want to tell others. Did you see what happened? I mean, all Jesus did is say, come and see. And Andrew said, went went home and told somebody, he said, Peter, you... Well, his name wasn't Peter yet. Simon, you got to come. Just come and see. That's all you got to do. The next day, you know, Philip was just there, and he went and told Nathaniel, you know, come on, you got to see this guy. And Nathaniel said, I don't want to go and see him. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? That's when you have them. See, when they ask you a question, that's when you have them. Because all you can see, come and see. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Is there anything worthwhile at that place? Can religion offer me anything? Come and see. Come and see. And for Nathaniel the skeptic, it was that experience... That simple invitation, when Jesus said, you're exactly who I want, where his skepticism began to give way to the possibility of something significant. So in closing, whoever you are and whatever you're looking for, I just invite you to take that journey with others. 
And I invite you to do it in this place as we seek to follow Jesus and figure out what that means for us and for our lives. I invite you on a journey of asking tough questions, of searching tough answers, of finding renewed meaning in the stuff we do every day. A lot of people have asked me, what do you expect to happen here? And I don't know. I don't know. But I'll leave you with Jesus' promise from our story. You see, the story ends with a disciple who is the most skeptical. And he makes Nathaniel a promise. He says, you know, so far you've followed me because you've found what you needed. But I will tell you this. You will see things much greater than this. In fact, I tell you, if you follow me, you're going to see the heavens and the earth opened up and angels ascending and descending. This building's beautiful. Boy, having all these people in it is like, it's a dream for me. But I will tell you, we will see things much greater than this. And I don't know what those things might be, but I invite you to come and see. Amen.